Hi, this is Mark from Productive Computing, and in this video we're going to take a look at a brand new feature in FileMaker 17 called Add-on Table. Stay tuned. So here we have a single FileMaker file called Contacts, and within that file I have a single table. Table is also called Contacts, and I've got the basic things you'd expect in any contact table. I've got an ID, first name, last name, company, and so forth. I have no relationships, there are no scripts, there are no value lists, and everything is as simple as it can be. So now you understand how this file is set up. Let's go take a look at the new feature, which is available in layout mode when you select the portal tool. I'll click and drag the portal tool, and you'll get a new option, which we didn't have before, called new add-on table. And this actually provides you with a whole nother window and a whole nother set of options here called add-on tables. Each one of these has a slightly different personality type, but once I show you one or two of these, you'll get the hang of what's going on here. And you'll see here on the right, as I select each one of these different types, you'll get a miniature thumbnail of what you might expect that to look like and a brief description as to what it is and does. So for action items, this is a set of fields to track multiple action items for each meeting record. It includes the owner, the status, and due date. So let's choose that. It even lets you rename it to something that you might find more familiar, but I'll push OK and select the default. And wow, look what happened here. We have a portal with those fields, and I have some interesting options as well. I have the ability to delete the portal row. We have down here the ability to add a new record to the portal. And each one of these comes with a tooltip. And some of these are even defined already as drop-down lists. And this one is already assigned to owner. And this one here is already assigned to status. So how is this happening? I didn't lift a finger but all of this schema was created. And just to prove to you that it's not just here on the layout, but it actually is in the system, I'm going to look at the value list here. And you can see that portal and that action of add-on table actually added two unique value lists. And not only did it add the value list, it predefined it with some values, some common values that I might want to select. And this one is using you know, a more advanced feature, which is using values from a specific field rather than just hard coding the values here. So, wow, a lot going on here now. So here's a button, and as you'd expect, it's actually performing an entirely new script, which, again, I had not created any scripts here prior to adding this tool. And it is indeed assigned to a script called Action Items Add, and it even goes a step further to put in an optional script parameter, which is the contact ID. So. There is a lot of interesting things going on here. Let's go to scripts. And not only did it create the script, it actually created a folder to organize that script. So now I have my action items folder with my first script. And it has three script steps. I've got to go to object. And it's already defined the object. And there's already an object name. Then it goes to the portal row, goes to the last portal row, and then goes to the field subject. All right. Let's go see what's happening under the hood here. Under the Manage Database, we actually have a brand new table called Action Items. Obviously, we need a table to store this data. And there are 11 fields created there. Let's take a look at them. We have the status, the due date, the subject, and the owner, along with description. Then it looks like we have traditional housekeeping fields here, starting with foreign key, primary key, created by, modified by, created timestamp, and modified timestamp. So very interesting indeed. If I click on my relationship, you can see that it actually created a table occurrence here called action items, and it created a relationship which it pulled my primary ID. Now, I didn't tell it to pull primary ID. I didn't even, how does it know that this ID is the primary ID? That's a bit of magic, I would say. Then on the right here, it looks like it's linking to the foreign key, which you'd expect. And it even selected the action items, which is going to allow creation of records in this table via the relationship and delete related records. So this saves quite a bit of time here, especially for a new user who might struggle creating all this and putting it together. So let's watch it in action now. And here I'm on an, a record with the first name Amber. 
I can actually put in a subject. So I'll say my subject. And the moment I selected tab, it created a new empty portal row in anticipation for a second related record. But I'll continue with this first one. I have owner. Now this is a drop down list, but because there are no existing values, it's going to be blank. So I'll just say the owner is me, Mark, and I'll put today as the due date, and I'll put the status as open issue, and I'll put here more description, more description info. Now let's add a second one. And this time it knows that one of the owners could be Mark, so I'll put, uh, I'll put another owner as Sue, and we'll make her due date Let's say July 26th for this one. Put here miscellaneous and then follow up. All right, now of course I can click this plus button and it will shuffle the records in such a way that allows me to make a third item here. And now of course my owners would be both Mark and Sue because it's a value list that's building upon existing data. One other important thing to note, when I manage the database, you'll see I do have a new table called action items, which we already knew about. If I select manage layouts, I don't actually have a new layout created as a result of the table. So of course I could do my own and create a layout based on action items like so. And let's open that now and go to table view and modify it in such a way that we can see all the data within it like so. Now you can see that as I add new action items, those records will appear here. But it's not necessary to create a new layout just because we have a new table. So the idea of adding an add-on table doesn't necessarily mean it will create a separate layout for you. So let's recap what this is doing. The add-on table option, which is available by clicking and dragging a new portal within layout mode, gives you the options to create various types of related data in a portal. Not only does it create a portal, it creates all the schema required to make that portal operational and those related records come alive. You also get the basic functionality of a portal, such as delete a related record, add a new related record, and drop down lists along with their associated value lists when appropriate, and even a tooltip, where if I hover over this tooltip, you'll see it says delete action item. Or if I hover over this plus button, it'll say add action item. Now, what would be interesting to see is let me go and delete this schema for a quick experiment. I'll delete the table. I'll delete the related table occurrence. I'll go here to the value list and delete the value list that were associated with that. I'll go to the scripts and delete the script and the folder it created. So now I should be back to square one. Let's delete that layout that we created as well. Okay, now we're back to where we were just a moment ago. And I'll do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to rename this table something specific to me. So it'd be action items mark. Now, if I've renamed it that way, let's see what my tooltip says. It still says add action item and delete action item. I guess what I was thinking it might do is delete action item mark. But the table is in fact called action items mark and the table occurrence along with that. Now, how did it know how to use my ID? Because that was a field that I had prior to this thing. So let's delete this again. just like we did a moment ago. Delete the value lists. This is actually good for you to see me do this again because then it really brings home the idea of how much schema that one option is creating. But this time I'm gonna be sneaky and I'm gonna delete my ID so that it doesn't have a primary ID. What will it do then? Let's go to layout mode and look what happens. I don't get the option to create an add-on table. How could that be? 
The reason for that is it doesn't identify a field that it can use to latch onto. Now, even though I create an ID field and make it a number, it still won't work. It won't work because it doesn't have enough properties to be qualified as a primary key. So let's click serial number here, simply adding that one auto enter serial number to an ID field will give it just enough information to be able to create an add-on table. Now what if I didn't have it as an auto enter serial number, but rather a calculated value where I got the UUID, like so, which is a common technique used in FileMaker development. What will it do then? Sure enough, it will do it because it sees that as having a calculatable primary key. It qualifies as a primary key. Now, just because I have a primary key field and it qualifies as a primary key field doesn't necessarily mean that I actually have data in my existing table here of 500 records because that's a brand new field that I created. So what I would have to do is go to my ID field and actually populate it with data. And I'll use this straight replace command, but I'll replace with a calculated result. And I'll do the exact same calculation, which is get UUID, except I'll replace it on all records. So now all 500 records have that UUID. At this point, because that's assigned, I will be able to actually add data. Okay, let's take a moment and look at a few more options that you get with these add-on tables. Attachments is pretty interesting. That one includes just a simple description and a container field. So you can actually just include an attached file. So it's pretty straightforward, very easy to understand. Let's get rid of that one. Let's add another one here. Let's take a look at companies. This is another interesting one because you can essentially associate a company with whatever record you're looking at. So if you had, let's say, a project type table as your main table, you could associate different companies that were related to that project. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. Inventory transactions is rather interesting. This one essentially becomes an audit log. You can have the in and out of your inventory. It automatically puts today's date. You can specify a lot number and a description. So that's quite handy for some basic inventory adjustments. So I think that covers exactly what's happening under the hood when I create a new add-on table. You've seen some interesting schema creation and some major functionality with just a couple of clicks of the button. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more content like this, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking our Facebook page, or following us on Twitter and LinkedIn. We also have a monthly newsletter describing the latest happenings here from Productive Computing, as well as other industry-related news. Thanks for watching.